Time for obsession. I feel, you see, that I must lay to rest a ghost which has haunted me for some time. I shall be away for several weeks in the highlands. Meanwhile, your patients might be encouraged by seeing you more often in your consulting room. But what about Baker Street? Post restaurant, Biogenes Club, and the Irregulars. You know my methods. Oh, I shall be watching you. With my third eye. The froggies are anxious to get it back. <laughs> Closing in ten minutes, sir. Hello! strong family resemblance between us. It's the bone structure. Peculiar to the Garidebs, be they male or female, don't you know? And this is Emily. Emily. We're descended from good Anglo-Saxon stock. Ancient blood courses through our veins. I, 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 I'm relieved to hear it. Oh, do please, please, do sit, sit down. Did, um, did you say Garideb? Doctor, I'm not in the habit of repeating myself. not in myself. the habit of repeating myself. I've just said that, Agnes, dear. My sister's a little hard of hearing, don't you know? One of my university lecturers was called Garrido. He remembers you, Dr. Watson. You're related. He is our brother, Nathan, and the only reason for our presence here today. Uh, he's ill. Not in uh, order. No. Well, are either of you ladies ill? Uh, not the in order. Oh. My sister and I have followed a strict regime of clean, healthy living since we were young girls. My father wouldn't allow it. And we insist that all our gentlemen do the same. Your gentlemen? Our gentlemen tenants, Dr. Watts. Oh, I see. You, um, <clears throat> you rent rooms. Not to anybody, you understand. My sister and I are most particular about who we have under our roof. Isn't that so, Emily? I don't quite follow. If, um, if no one is ill, why have you come to see me? I'd have thought that was obvious, Doctor. We, we have a case for Mr. Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Mycroft, wake up. Cancel me? Oh, 
We don't often see you here at the Diogenes. Have you spoken to your brother as requested? Alas, no. Well, I don't need to remind you from whence the request came. It is the Prime Minister's personal wish that your brother should employ his detective skills, find the Mazarin diamond, and return it to Whitehall without delay. I'm rather afraid Sherlock's uh, unavailable at the present time. Unavailable? Inconvenient, I know, but uh, he's engaged in another case up in the Highlands that's expected back for about a week. Not good enough, Mycroft. You really must try and keep your brother on a shorter leash. Do you know the history of the Mazarin diamond? Yes, of course I do. It was named after Cardinal Jules Mazarin, a chief minister during the reign of Louis XIV. It belongs now to Her Majesty the Queen. Yes, but it is soon to be returned to France, where it belongs as a goodwill gesture on the part of the British people. And I think you'll agree that such a gesture can only help to cement the relationship between our two countries. To go back on our word now could spell diplomatic disaster. The Prime Minister has asked that your brother investigates this case and Mr. Holmes has never, ever let him down. My dear Horatio, if Sherlock were here, I'm sure he'd be more than delighted to assist. At least I think he would. But he's not here, you see, so he can't. But I could. Illuminate him. He came to the house yesterday. Who did? The American. An American came to your house to visit your brother and offered him a large sum of money. Five million dollars. Five million dollars? Fifteen million dollars to be divided between three people. With the same name. Gary Debs. But only male Gary Debs can share the fortune. Like my brother. And the American. But it's as plain as a pike staff, Doctor. Oh. He's not a real Gary Debb at all. No, he says he is, but we know otherwise, don't we, Emily? You do? How? Bone structure. He simply doesn't have it. No. Of course. Bone structure. Whoever he is, the man's an absolute cat. Mycroft, think of the country. Imagine if the Mazarin diamond was never found. Or turns up again in a variety of different shapes. Now, ladies, if you'll excuse me, there are patients waiting to be seen. Here is our card, Doctor. You will speak on our behalf, won't you, Doctor? Please. I'll do what I can. Five million dollars. Thank you for listening, Doctor. Come along, Agnes. It's not as intelligent as I thought it'd be. The name Garrida will almost certainly mean nothing to you, but I feel I should relay the particulars of a most extraordinary tale. How long had the diamond been exhibited before its theft? Uh, nearly ten years. Inside the same glass case? Yes, as far as we know. Yeah. Has um, this lock ever been changed? The whole gate would have to be replaced, Mr. Holmes. Nothing was left to chance. Inspector, whoever took the diamond was able to walk in here without any apparent difficulty. Since there are no marks or scratches on the lock to suggest it was forced, we may safely conclude the thief had a key. Once inside, it would have been the work of a moment to smash the case and remove the stone. I gather you were unconscious at the time of the theft, is that correct? Oh, that's right, sir. So? Well, I was just seeing out the last of the public and getting ready to lock up for the night. When he came at me. You saw him? Oh, no, sir. And before I could turn around, he clobbered me and I went down. You seem confident that your attacker was a male who acted alone? Oh, I suppose so, sir. Uh, but I couldn't swear to it. As far as I knew, the Count had gone and the museum was empty. The Count? 
The Count Silvius was the last member of the public to leave the building before the attack happened. Count Negretto Silvius. We've spoken to him. He remembers seeing nothing untoward. He would. And the Commissioner himself has asked me not to pursue that line of inquiry. Mm. Count was lucky, sir. We stayed any longer. He might have got covered as well. Dear. Oh, he hasn't, has he? Yes, he has. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, Watkins. Nice to see you after all these years. Pay no regard, Doctor. Well, sit you down, sit you down, young Watkins. Oh. A species of the family, Vespertilionidae. I found them in a subterranean cavern in my travels in Safala in Southeast Africa in my younger days. Uh, don't get out much now, of course. Hands and legs aren't what they were. Nathan, uh, Dr. Watson is acting for Mr. Sherlock Holmes. He's come to talk about the other Mr. Gary Deb, not your hands and legs. Oh, here it is. Tell him what the American told us. Our visitor started by explaining that anyone from Kansas in the United States of America would recognize the name Alexander Hamilton Gary Deb. He had no kith nor kin, but he took a kind of pride in the queerness of the name, and that's what brought us together. One day I had a visit from the old man. He was tickled to death to find someone else of the same name and dead set on finding out if there were any other Gare Debs in the world. So he asked me to find him another. I said I was a busy man and couldn't spend my life hiking around the world in search of other Gare Debs. But when he died, about a year later, he left behind the queerest will ever filed in the state of Kansas. His property was divided into three parts, of which I was to have one, on condition that I found two Garadebs who would share the remainder. Five million dollars each, if it's a cent. But we can't lay a finger on it until we all three stand in a row. Don't believe a word of it. Sir, there isn't one in the whole of the United States. I went through with a fine tooth comb and never a Garadev could I catch. Then I decided to try the old country. And sure enough, there was your name in the London telephone directory. Three adult men, sir. That's what it specified in Alexander Hamilton Garadev's will. Female relatives are disqualified. Surely there must be some other Gary Debs in the world. What do you think? Well, do you believe this man's story, Mr. Gary Deb? Oh, without a doubt. They had an honest face. Oh, Rick, the man's a rogue. Your sisters think otherwise. Emily and Agnes are inclined to read too much romantic fiction. They're inclined to find shadows where there should only be light. Nonsense. Well, thank you for explaining, Mr. Gary Deb. It's been a great pleasure to see you again, sir. I have a word. Nathan. Oh, you silly old... Well, you'll just have to draw your own conclusions. Well, if, as seems probable, this American Garadev is a rogue, then you may already have seen the last of him. But please, please let me know if there are any further developments. Oh, oh we, we shall. shall. Goodbye, sir. Good day to you then, young Watkins. Mm. Poppycock and bongolash. Just think what I could do with five million dollars. I've got the nucleus of a national collection. I shall be the Hans Sloan of my age.
Mycroft Holmes. Well, well. First the police, and now you. You come to find where I am hiding the Mazarin store? I didn't expect a confession, huh, Count? Then you won't be disappointed. Please, sir, uh, if you wish. Mm. Be careful. It's a hair trigger. They uh, were a gift from the Princess of Wales. Such balance, such workmanship. A beautiful thing fits strangely in the wrong hand. Yeah, she is extraordinarily beautiful. She? A diamond. Oh. I must say, I'm surprised no one has been tempted to steal her away from Whitehall before. I'm sure the temptation was there, Count. All that was lacking was audacity and opportunity. Ah, audacity and opportunity. And motive. Avariciousness and greed are motives, Count. I'm sure you're familiar with them. The police are uh, satisfied that I was away from the building when the theft occurred. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. I'm following my own line of inquiry, as my brother did with Miss Minnie Warrender when she accused you of stealing her jewels. My conscience is clear. Our past is an unresolved duel, my brother. You may hold some personal grievance against me, but that gives you no right to sully my good name and reputation. This is between us, Count. You and me. Oh, do forgive me. It's a hair trigger. My dear Holmes, I agree that five million dollars is an impossibly generous offer. But for the sake of my old tutor, I hope it doesn't prove to be false. I'm sorry to disturb you, Doctor. There's a Mr. Gary Deb to see you. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Show him in. Forgive me, I was expecting someone else. Mr. Nathan Gary Deb, I suppose. You must be Dr. Watkins. Close. What can I do for you, Mr. Garadet? For a start, you can stop interfering in matters that don't rightly concern you. I'm sorry. I saw the old man and his sisters today, and they told me you were acting on behalf of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Well, that's no reflection on you, Mr. Garadet. Mr. Holmes and I have means of getting information which is not normally available to the public. I don't want the police butting into a private matter. But surely the sooner we find a third male Garadeb, the better for all concerned. Well, that puts it different. If you're content to help us find the third man, well, I can't see any harm in that. I hope I've put your mind at rest, Mr. Garadeb. John Garadeb. I'm sorry if I was a bit short with you back there. Dr. Watkins? Watson. That's quite all right. I'm fairly new to this country and haven't gotten used to your English ways yet. I guess I must seem impatient to a man like yourself. Urbane and unsophisticated. Good luck with your search, Mr. Garadev. I'll be in touch if I discover anything useful. Much obliged, Doctor. Much obliged.
John Garridev has an English coat, frayed at the elbow and trousers, bagged at the knees with at least a year's wear. Despite what he says, I'll wager that he hasn't just arrived in this country. You would hardly refuse to trade with someone who possessed a diamond of uh, exceptional quality. That depends, Mr. Micro. Oh? On what? The provenance of the diamond, of course. Oh. Its legality. Even if it were brought to you by a uh, respectable member of society? Her Majesty could offer me the crown jewels, and I'd still refuse to do business with her. Mm -hmm. Strange to think that pieces of crystallized carbon can be the cause of such great human happiness and tragedy. Some things are better said in private, Mr. Micro. You do understand. I think we understand each other. You have a reputable business. You can't afford to make mistakes. Lachaim. You were offered a diamond. Yes. I was interested, of course. He was willing to pay a lot of money. Who was? Tell me. The Count. And his name? Count Silvius. Hmm. Well, that's no good to me, Aki. I need them within two days. With the greatest respect, sir, only Roger Presbury could have cut your diamond in less than a week. And he took his skills with him to the grave. Well then, i better find someone alive to do the work while there is still time. What can you do? Who was Roger Presbury? Ah, a true genius. In his hands, a lifeless, shapeless stone became a living, breathing work of art. Diamonds were his life. And his death. Indeed. He was murdered five years ago during a quarrel about some gems. Ah, such a tragedy. Did you see the Count's diamond? Alas, no. But he did give me a description of it. He described a round stone of finest purity and color, approximately 100 carats in weight. 110, Mr. Mycroft. But a little too close for comfort to a description of the Mazarin stone. I've taken up another of your time. Not at all, Mr. Mycroft, sir, not at all. Ladies! Ladies, I've got news! Ladies, tell your brother I've got good news. Your antipathy for the Count is well known. Unlike your reasons, he brings the higher echelons of our society into disrepute. In your opinion. I suppose you realize that the Count is among the guests at Olivia at St. James's Palace tomorrow morning. Huh. He should be serving a prison sentence. And the Prince and Princess of Wales are unlikely to entertain suspected criminals, are they? Drive on, George. He would be most disturbed if he knew of your attention. Your most humble servant, ah. A beautiful thing fits strangely in the wrong hand. Howard 
Gary Deb, constructor of agricultural machinery. Binders, reapers, steam and hand plows, drills, harrows, farmers' carts, buckboards, all other appliances. Estimates for artesian wells, apply Grosvenor Buildings, Aston. John, Nathan, and now Howard. The third Garadam. Read the advertisement again, Doctor. Oh, look at the spelling. Howard Garadet, construction of agricultural machinery, binders, reapers, steam and hand plows. And how do you spell plows? P-L-O-W-S. Oh, that's American spelling. Well, it could be a printer's error. Oh. Buckboards, artesian, artesian wells in Birmingham. So, you're implying that this advertisement has been written by an American, John Garadet. And this Howard Garadet simply doesn't exist. And yet he has asked Nathan to meet him in his office alone tomorrow night in Birmingham. Now something is wrong, Doctor. Terribly wrong. Count Negretto Silvius. Game shot, sportsman, oh, man about town, confidence trickster. Uh, please, sir. Here it is. And now, diamond thief. I'll have him. I'll have him. You can't go in there. It's quite all right, Mrs. Hudson. Dr. Watson. The Count is expected. Well, you might have warned me. I want to talk to this man in private. Stay where you are, Watson. You have gone out of your way to annoy me. You have set your creatures upon my track. My creatures? <laughs> I assure you now. Two days ago, it was a, a cabman. Today, some booming old fool at the palace. You give my little impersonations too much praise. So, you admit that you have dogged me. Why? I want the Mazarin stone. You've come here to find out how much I know and how far my removal is absolutely essential when I know everything except one thing which you are now about to tell me. Where is the Mazarin stone? Well, how the devil should I be able to tell you where she is? Do you know what's kept in this uh, notebook, Count? You, you're all here. Every action of your vile and dangerous life. You know you will make nothing of that. Uh, here is the robbery on the train de Luxe to the Riviera. And here... Oh, in the same year, Count, is the forged check to the Crédit Lyonnais. No, you are wrong there. Then I'm right on the others. Now, Count, you are a card player. When the other fellow has all the trumps, it saves time to put down one's hand. What has all this to do with the Mazaran stone? I have the cabby who took you to Whitehall and brought you away again. I have the attendant who saw you lucking near the jewel case. I have the jeweler who refused to cut the stone up. That's the hand I play from. But one card is missing. Queen of Diamonds. You're wasting time if you believe I have her. Continue to dog me here if it amuses you. Don't amuse me. Remember, hair trigger. How can he hope to dispose of it? The jeweler said it would take weeks to cut up the stone. Only a man called Presbury could do it in less time. 
and he's dead. But the man who killed him may still be alive. What does he mean by hair trigger? He means I won't die in my bed. These are post-mortem photographs of Roger Presbury. Rather unpleasant, I'm afraid. You must be used to such sights, Doctor. Oh, yes, indeed. And what can you tell us of his murderer, Inspector? A man called Winter. I've got his photograph here in our rogues gallery somewhere. Found guilty of manslaughter, sentenced to five years. Oh, released two months ago. Here he is, a native of Chicago. James Winter, alias Moorcroft. Alias Evans, alias John Garadeb. The man you know as John Garadeb once worked for Roger Pestry. It's quite extraordinary. Really. Get away with him! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get out of the way! Get away! 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 Get my dear Watson, Presbury dead five years. Identify Garadeb's lodger, Holmes. God, I thought it was you. This is proof. He feels my boot very close to his backside. It must be very wearisome for you trying to keep this place tidy, Mrs. Hudson. <laughs> my sister and I are quite used to clutter. It seems that this John Garadev is an imposter. His name is Winter. Well, I told you, Emily. I didn't like his eyes. It was the bone structure, well, dear. You simply didn't have it. A telegram <laughs> arrived a moment ago. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Now, ladies, please. Please come to workshop. Urgent information. I keep. It is very important that you tell me about your American lodger and why he left your household. Oh, he didn't leave. He simply disappeared. Do you remember when? When? Oh, dear. My sir, uh, four or five years ago, isn't that right, Emily? Give or take a few months, yes, dear. And then your brother took over his room. How clever of you to know that, Doctor. <sighs> Miss Garadab. Miss Garadab. Oh. And Miss Garadab. Oh, Watson, would you be good enough to escort these ladies home? I have urgent business to attend to. I'll follow you later. I'll try to persuade Nathan not to travel to Birmingham. We should be so grateful. It could cause irreparable damage to his health. Forgive me, ladies. Two of the finest detectives it's ever been my privilege to meet. <laughs> Such a card. <laughs> I really am very sorry. What's done is done, Mr. Mycroft. Van Seder is in London. He plans to return to Amsterdam before tomorrow night. Who is Van Seder? He has a boat down on the Thames. I don't know where. He will take... He will take the Mazarin stone to Amsterdam. I'm sure the stone hasn't been cut. Ah. Well, you see, it can be cleaved. Split down the grain with a single blow. Would Presbury's assistant have the necessary skill to cleave a large diamond? He may convince others that he has, but not me. The man is a criminal, Mr. Garadet. But he doesn't exist. Oh. Oh, 
You're jealous because I'm about oh. to inherit five million dollars. Oh, I have no right to insist, no. but it's no. my professional advice, Mr. No. Gallagher, that you should not travel to no. Burma. No. Out of my way, young Watkins, no. unless you wish to be trampled underfoot. When I return tomorrow, I shall be a wealthy man. Houston! Doctor, my sister and I will have to retire shortly. There are plenty of spare beds if you wish to sleep, Doctor. Oh, no, please, please don't worry about me, Miss Gallup. I'll just stay there. Oh, oh, well, there are plenty of cushions. Now, let's plump them up a little more comfortable, I'm sure. Oh, no, no, please don't let me, um, don't let me keep you awake. I'll just draw the curtains for you, oh, Doctor. Oh, no, no, please, 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 that's fine. You will help yourself to tea and cake, won't you, Doctor? Oh, thank you very much. Or there's a little sherry, if you prefer. Don't hesitate. In fact, I, I might just... Come along, Emily, dear. Thank you. Good night, then, Doctor. Good night. Oh! All clear, is it? Yes. Splendid. Oh! What an extraordinary room. Yeah. I'm afraid Mr. Garadev is on his way to Birmingham. Oh, that's excellent. <coughs> this is much more serious than I thought, Watson. You may need this. Does the candles, Watson? Is that sherry? Yes.
Johnny, all right. I saw the gun in his hand. I didn't... You got the wrong man. I think not, Mr. Winter. It was Presbury's idea. Presbury's dead. When he was alive, sir. You've got to believe me. He went to the museum every week for three years. All the while figuring out a way to steal the Mathurin stone and hack it up. Making the duplicate key was easy. Before he had a chance to use it, he died. He was murdered for that key. Not by me, sir. I'm sorry, Doctor. I told the jury so at the trial. It was some argument over uh, jewelry. But they didn't believe me. Did you steal the Mazarin stone? No, sir. I did not. I didn't mean to hit you with that. I'm sorry. Then who did? Presbury's murderer. The only other man who knew of his plan to steal it. And the only man cool enough to take a diamond out of Whitehall. And the man for whom you spent five years of your life behind bars. It suited us both to work together. Please, let me help you. He could steal it and I could use Presbury's equipment to cut it yeah. fast. <laughs> but Nathan... Gaddy Dad was in the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was the only one who knew the location of his workshop. Can you wonder I wanted to get to it? And can you wonder when I found this, this crazy boob of a bug hunter squatting right on top of it and never quitting his room? Well, I had to do all I could to shift him. <laughs> Easy. Would have been a whole lot easier to put him away. But I'm a soft-hearted guy. As your Lord Byron said, he was the mildest mannered man who ever cut a throat. Where is the Mazarin stone? My associate is bringing it here with him. But I guess now we'll have to forego cleaving it before shipping it to Amsterdam. By Van Seda? Yes. <laughs> it's already on its way to Amsterdam. Your associate has betrayed you just as he's betrayed so many others. He and I made a deal. And a gentleman always keeps his word. Shall no, I, please, please. Shall I get a doctor, doctor? No, no, it's, just get me some, a towel and some water, please. Thank you. I, I, Your associate has used you, Winter. He'd no intention of allowing you to cleave the stone. You'd served your purpose. Now, where is Van Seder's boat?
the mind. Bravo. Ti sfido un solo te. Messi bianco.